so much. Um, when did you feel the need to start writing and composing music for the first time? It would have been in my second band. So I'd, I had another band that was just a covers band and I was playing bass. Then I started playing guitar and then it was in that band that I started writing. I'd done some lyric writing before that, but that was just to, that was basically to whatever computer game I was playing. So that's kind of how I started writing lyrics. And then musically, yeah, it was once I started playing guitar. So I think bass for writing isn't, it doesn't really lend itself to it as much. So, um, especially not when you're first starting out, but guitar, yeah, I just felt like I wanted to, I wanted to write on it, so I did. Who's your main musical influence? Oh, there's loads now. It gets really complicated because I do, I do quite a few different types of things. So there's obviously like the guitar playing thing, which has its own kind of strand of influences. So that's kind of Eric Roach and Thomas Lieb and a bunch of really technical guitarists. And then writing-wise, I actually really like a lot of the kind of classic, kind of classic songwriters. People like Randy Newman and. And again, kind of Neil Young and kind of crosses over a bit, and Jenny Mitchell and that whole kind of scene. And then there's loads of guys I listen to just for production, like Cornelius is just, I, I love his production, it's really interesting and layered and yeah, it's all, all kinds of stuff. It's endless and loads of, of new stuff that I keep finding, I mean, in, in kind of researching for this album. I did, well I was mainly listening to, I was listening to a lot of world music stuff, a lot of kind of Chinese folk music and loads of really strange things just because I knew I wanted it to be kind of more commercial and less folky than my fourth album, which was pretty much just guitar and vocal the whole time. So with this one I knew I wanted it to be bigger but I didn't want it to, I didn't want it to be big and simple, I wanted to kind of layer it with interesting things. That's where a lot of the kind of stranger melodies come from. What is the message that you want to express with your music? I think I, I take what I put out into the world quite seriously, I think. I think probably more seriously than most, judging by kind of people I've spoken to. I think, I just, yeah, I kind of figure that whatever you put out will eventually come back to you in some form. And I think if, you, if you're sending out something that's like a kind of negative message, it just, yeah, it, it just doesn't, doesn't sit well with me. I, I really, because I, I don't do this just for music, it is, it's a kind of communication thing. I think that's why, that's why I love playing live so much, because there is this, you're directly communicating with other people, and like, the more people, the better, and it's, I mean, one of my favorite things anyone ever said was I did, I did Isle of Wight Festival, which I think is, it's a lot of people, it's like, eight, is it 80,000 or 55,000 people? Like, it's loads. So it's a huge amount of people, and then someone that was in a bar at the back, who'd been there all day, he was working there, came up to me because he just saw me on my way out and he went, can I just tell you, you made Isle of Wight Festival feel really intimate for like 45 minutes and I was like, that's, that's amazing, that's kind of, I didn't even realise that's what I was trying to do until someone said I'd done it and I was like, that is what I'm kind of going for, so it's, yeah, it's that kind of real genuine communication with human beings and I, I don't put up any any walls live it's not like a performance that you can't interrupt like if someone shouts something I will generally stop and find out why they're shouting which I think is nice I think it kind of yeah it's definitely it's kind of I've created the live show out of all the live shows I've ever liked so anyone that's done something the, like the bit weird that I found really interesting they're like oh I'll have that and then I'll take this bit from here and it's ended up being this yeah, kind of very kind of casual and very kind of hard technical show, which is really fun. Uh, your music career started some years ago, and you have mm -hmm. a great big experience behind your back. How did you see your music today compared to the past, and what kind of evolution does it have? It's changed quite a lot, but it's it's really odd. I think I, I think I just read too many kind of people's opinions because there's people that saying that the new album is. I mean, actually, it's gone down really well with the hardcore fan base. They really like this one. There's a lot of people have said that it's better than the first one, which is amazing. But for yeah, the people that don't that don't like it don't like it for really weird reasons that I can't quite get my head around. So there's there's a group of people being like, it's too different. I can't handle it. I'm freaking out. And then people say it's exact. It hasn't changed at all. Like, why are you doing the same thing? So you cannot win. So I think. I try not to think about it that much. I just kind of do whatever I feel like doing. 
because uh, the studio is in my house I can kind of work in my pyjamas half the time <laughs> so you can really yeah just kind of capture any any mood and I think this album this album is, is my favourite thing I've ever done by quite a long way I think I think I'm particularly proud of this especially from a writing point of view I feel like we really stepped it up uh, you Man Love is the title of your last album released the past year mm -hmm. um, did you think that nowadays humanity is still able to love Yeah, I think so. I'm not giving up on it. Um, I think there's, there's obviously the stuff that gets the most press is the most horrific and most negative stuff that there is on offer in the entire world. So you don't really hear about people doing amazing things. Like it's so much rarer that people kind of respond to, to that. For some reason we seem to really latch on to whatever's going horribly wrong in the world, which is it's a strange compulsion, but I think everyone does it to a certain degree. Actually, one of my friends has just started a happy newspaper, which is just all the awesome things that have happened recently. So there is this kind of movement to be aware of it, at least. Uh, Get Free is the first song from your album. Mm -hmm. It's a cover by Major Laser. Mm -hmm. um, it's a song that has a great impact lyrically, but you're able to give it more strength in the video. It's mm -hmm. not like a shout of freedom. And the question is, is there at this moment in your artistic life a need of freedom, or are you managed to reach it? Well, I think the biggest kind of change that happens recently is I, ch I changed label. So I was with the same same record label for a long time we did four albums with them and then as soon as the as soon as that kind of contract finished I suddenly felt this massive kind of weight had been lifted off my shoulders also a massive need to kind of prove myself having got out of that deal so it was, it was a really it was a really good cocktail of kind of emotions that I had to work with because it was a real kind of hunger and this kind of artistic freedom because I wasn't trying to convince people of the same things over and over again which I did keep hitting walls There's, in fact a lot of my favorite tracks on this album were things that would never have made it onto anything else I did so I mean that's had it's actually had a bigger impact than I would have thought mm -hmm. yeah. in terms of and even the, the live shows changed massively as well like this this little tour this um, kind of two week one and this is the last eight <laughs> of i think is the best thing I've ever done. I feel like cause the, the solo stuff was, was awesome and I, I kind of did that as far as... I took that as far as I, I possibly could in terms of multitasking and completely frying my own brain. And then with this, I think it's got a really good balance of kind of drums and electronic stuff and electric guitars and acoustic guitars and it's just like there's so many different modes throughout the show which is... Yeah, it's amazingly fun to do. Uh, your videos are often quite static. You used to see you play your gear, singing, and sitting in the mm -hmm. middle of nowhere. Yeah, they like making me do that. <laughs> <laughs> But up, up and away is very choreographed. We used yeah. to see you dance. So yeah, which I did, I did not see that coming. <laughs> are you a would be dancer? Do you like dancing? I, d I like it, but I definitely never say I am any good at it at all. <laughs> no, it was just very really, I was, because it was my idea, I, I was checking the mixes for the album and I was yeah. kind of running around and just kind of jogging. That, actually that's my jogging route, that's kind of where I go. And I was just, oh, and it looks really nice because there's the river and there's little boats and it's kind of cool. And then I started throwing in the occasional dance move and then I went kind of this, what if when I did a little random dance move like other people did it behind me and you could kind of build it that way. And then the, yeah, I spoke to the director that did the Get Free video who did and it's such a good job on that that we, we wanted to work with him again and um, yeah it's awesome it has been recently announced your participation in the cast of American Idiot yes uh, why did you choose to participate I was it was actually one of a really old school friends okay. asked me to do it and I, I think at any other time I would have said no because there was too much music stuff to do but I think I think at this stage like, I've been going 10 years just doing one thing <laughs> so just making albums and touring so that's all I've done and I think I feel like it's kind of time for a tougher change and I think the album's different and it's just kind of building and I think there is 
a certain pressure at this stage as well because I, I, I don't want to I don't want to not mention it because it is one of my motivations for doing it is that we have hit like a strange middle point where people are like yeah but he's what else is he doing is he has he written a book no is he, is he in a film no well I like, was he doing he's doing music all the time so it was really and I was talking to I was talking to people about it like what could we do and a lot of people mentioned American Idiot as this kind of dream solution and then a really a really old friend that I went to school with when I was like 11 is who's in it at the moment kind of sent me an email it's like I'm doing this we really what we could really do with someone to play Johnny like would you be up for it and I was just like actually you know what Definitely. Right now, this is exactly the right time. So I've started kind of training for it and stuff because, it's, yeah, it's going to be a serious challenge. Because uh, obviously, vocally, it's actually not as kind. Of, yeah, it's definitely not as challenging as some of the stuff I write for myself to do. Which is weird. I don't know why I do that to myself. But anyway, um, but I do have to. I think I'm in my pants for pretty much the whole show, which is the scariest bit for me at the moment. Of all of your songs, is there anyone that you're most proud of and one you regret? And why? Actually, I, I, there's no songs I regret. There's songs I like more than others. There's songs that I'm like, why do people like that? That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't not like it. I'm just confused by their love, if that makes sense. Um, my favorite things are, I mean, up, up, and away, I, every time, because it. It was just one of those things that while we were working on it, we just never got bored. Every time it came on, we're like, eh, it's a party time. <laughs> and that was, like, with a lot of the record, that was, we just had a huge amount of fun making this one. The track we did with Empire of the Sun was, I'm really proud because that is the hardest vocal thing I've ever done. Like, so crazy high. The track with, with Tessa was, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm really proud of this whole album. And then going back, Studio Zoo was the first thing I ever produced, so that was a really steep learning curve from that point of view. And there's some songs on that that it's really weird. It's like the opposite of pop. There's some really strange pieces of music on there, which I loved making because I just, yeah, I just stopped. I stopped playing the game and just wanted to see what happens. So if I don't play the game at all and I just do whatever comes into my head, and it is really, it's a very strange record. So if you like really strange acoustic music, have a listen to that album because there's loads of it. Um, album three wise actually Sugar in the Snow I still come back to it's one of my favourites which is weird because it's not one that I say it, it wasn't like a single or anything it's just, it's just I just love the vibe of it and In the Morning off uh, that was off the same record has my favourite key change I've ever come up with and it's it switches it switches key and then as it switches key, a guy playing a saw comes in. And it's, it's my favourite moment I've ever kind of created. And I had a real, like, I was, hello, how are you doing? I was trying to, um, I was trying to describe what I wanted to the producer. And I was basically like, kind of, can it be like kind of sunset? No, sunrise on Mercury, so like this giant sun. And I think we kind of nailed it actually landed exactly where I wanted it to and Human Love the track was another kind of interesting challenge because on its own with the guitar it could be just like a dinky nice song but the production takes it so far away from that because it's so kind of weird and robotic and industrial a great fun uh, these are two questions that we used to ask to various artists mm -hmm. Uh, what do you think about crowdfunding and talent shows? Crowdfunding, I, th I think, is a really good way of getting things moving. I mean, you can't really argue with, like, if people want something and they want to pay for it in advance. And I, I know lots of friends that have had, have had it go really well and really badly and needed help and stuff. And it's hard. Like, it's hard work to do. But I think in, as a concept, it definitely works. Kind of talent shows thing, the big TV stuff is is a tricky one because I think if you can use that as a starting point and have a a whole career out of it then you've earned that career there's no there's no way around that but if I think yeah for anyone that can't really do it then 
it'll kind of go up and then disappear again. So it's kind of, I, I don't think it's as damaging as some people do. And also, it's, it's not even that. There's so many factors to being to being an artist and writing and singing. Like there are a lot of people I know that are incredible singers, incredible writers. They're just going around playing pubs. Like there, there are no rules, and that, I don't think there ever really has been. Uh, what about your future project? Oh, I started writing the next album before I finished this one. I started having ideas. We've got yeah, we've got loads of because. Yeah, basically, with me, there's just no rules at all. I can do... I don't seem to... People just seem to take whatever I do in kind of exactly the same way. It's like, I can do something massively stripped back, massively produced, produced in different ways. Like, yeah, there's all kinds of... So I think we're going to... I'll probably do kind of what we did with the last one, which is loads of themed... <laughs> loads of themed writing weeks. So we did stuff where... Like we did like a rock week that was just really heavy. We did like an electronic week where I didn't touch a guitar, it was all programmed. I did like a week with just drums and bass and no chords. And it's like a really interesting way of finding out what excites you the most at that time. And I think that we've got a whole bunch of, of stuff left over from those things, some of which I'd really like to explore a bit more. Thank you so much. That's right. That's right. Take it all the way together 